All right, here we go. We're gonna do a little walkthrough on how to set up some basic MIDI routing with the X-Touch Mini by Behringer. Um, so yeah, let's just jump right into it. Um, obviously the first thing you're gonna have to do in Mixing Station, and it's not exactly what this video is about, but you gotta create some sort of a layout that you like, and it's going to correspond with how you set up your um, how you intend to set up your MIDI device, but this is a layout that I've settled on that kind of works out well for me, for what I'm doing. And the multiple different layouts that I have, um, but you can set it up however you want. The one thing, you want to be able to see your channel strips. Um, I like having some informa extra information in my channel strips, and then I like having this overview here, but the thing that's going to be more important specifically for this video is these right here, these layers. So let's let's just go into that real quick. So go into settings, layers. Um, most of these ones are the ones that I, I think were default. Um, I created this extra one and then um, I created these to be specifically 1 through 8 and 9 through 16 because I'm going to be bouncing between them. As you can see here, I just have 8 and we're going to set it up so we can go to my other eight. So let's see. Layers. So right now, as you can see, all of these are not visible. I only have these ones visible, the ones that I want. Also, you can see all of these sends on fader um, options are also all not visible. We're not going to need them for this setup, um, but even in my more advanced setup, I still have them not visible. I just have buttons that open them. Um, so I don't need, this just makes the button to get to them visible. Same thing here, these still exist. They're just the button to get to them is not visible um, because we don't need that for how I'm setting it up. Um, we're not gonna be using any of the sends on faders in this video. We're gonna do something really, really basic. So anyway. The first thing you're going to want to do um, after you get your layout and you got your layers set up for what, however you're going to end up setting up your thing, um, for what we're doing, you just at least want to have channel 1 through 8, channel 9 through 16. I guess quickly, we'll just go into how you would do that. So if you're going to create a new layer, um, you hit plus, layer, and then you just choose what you want to see in this layer. Um, so you could do one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, go back. Now this layer is going to be on our home screen. And it's going to be, well, it's going to be the exact same as this because that's what I have in my one through eight. But if I went through 9 to 16 and then went to that layer, it's 1 through 8. So let's go ahead and get rid of that. Delete. You can also rearrange the order of these two if you wanted to. Um, okay, so getting into our MIDI setup. First thing we're going to want to set up is our knobs, which are going to be our faders. They're gonna end up controlling these. So in order to get to your MIDI setup, well, hold on, actually, let me back up a little bit. So in order to get your MIDI device configured at all, you're gonna have it plugged in via USB directly into your computer, and your computer's gonna be connected to your mixer, also via USB. I'm using an XR18, but this is true this is how you would set it up for any digital mixer. So anyway, go into settings, MIDI. Oh, you also have to make sure that settings, this MIDI support button is on. MIDI support has to be on. Configures USB MIDI support. So anyway, once that's on, go into MIDI. Um, you will have to add a new device. Device too. You can rename it to X Touch Mini or whatever you want. Um, I was using the Mackie Control. I think it re actually doesn't matter which one you really use because we're not 
I'm going to be using the stock um, MIDI layout anyway. We're going to be making our own. It does work with X-Touch MCU, and it does work with Mackie Control. That's the one that I'm using just because, I don't know, that's just the one that I was using, and it definitely works. 99.9% um, .9 sure this works too. General MIDI would probably work. But anyway, I'm using Mackie Control. And then you want to make sure that you scroll down to the one that says X-Touch Mini and click on that. I'm not going to click on it because I already have one made, but then you would hit apply and you would end up with this, whatever you named it, and X-Touch Mini. Um, and then, so in case you need to change any of those things, if you made the wrong choice, you can get back into it by device setup. And then once it's made, you can click directly on it. And now we're in here. And now all of these, a lot of them have crazy names. Some of them make sense. Like channel knob one is this. It's going to be channel knob one. And you notice there's channel knob press one. Um, one thing that's going to be useful for navigating around this is find controller. So now I can press any one of these buttons or twist any one of these knobs and it'll automatically toggle to the corresponding button. So that's really useful when you're hopping around, especially since a lot of them have crazy names. It's useful when you're hopping around. Um, all of these ones here I renamed to button one through eight. Um, that's there. There will be times where you want to have like a certain set of buttons named the same thing so that you can swap what they all do at the same time. But we're not going to be doing that in this video. That'll be for a later video. But anyway, those are not all the... Some of them were named button. Some of them were named something else, and I changed those ones to button. Like this one is Pi, Po, Rewind, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, um, but the knobs came named as Channel Knob 1 and Channel Knob Press 1. So you don't have to change any of that stuff. So we're going to start with Channel Knob 1. So find controller, channel knob one, add action. We're going to do current layer because we're going to be swapping layers. So offset one, the offsets just refer to um, like where these are in relation to each other. So it's going to be offset zero through seven so that when we swap layers, it'll know to be offset 0 through 7 for the next layer. Anyway, offset 0, we're going to go main fader. And then that's it. Offset 1, main fader. And now that says channel level. Another thing that's helpful here, we're going to go ahead, copy, find controller, channel knob 2. I'm going to give that a little twist. We're going to go paste, but it's at it's set at offset 1, but we want it to be at the next one. We want it to be the second knob, which is going to be offset 1. Find controller. Paste. Now we're going to offset 2. Find controller. Looks like I already didn't delete everything. We're going to go ahead and delete that stuff. Paste. Offset 3 for knob 4. Find controller. Paste. Offset 4. Find controller. Paste. Offset 5. This can get a little confusing when you're doing them. I, I don't like how they start at number 0. Makes it really confusing when you're trying to count from 1. Um, offset 6. Find controller. Offset 7 for the 8th knob. Okay. So let's go through, make sure those all we didn't miss one. Find controller. Boom, boom, 
Boom. Boom. Looks like we got them all. So now if we go back to our main page, now these all correspond. You can see them move up there. You can also see, you know, you can see the channel light up down here as well. Um, so yeah, all of these work. So now that's only half of our channels though. So we want to be able to control our other channels. But before we do that, actually, yeah, let's go ahead and do that. So now we're going to we're going to have these buttons over here, change our layers. Conveniently, that says layer too, so that'll work out nicely. All right, so we're gonna go find layer or find controller and go click our layer A button. Whatever happens to, I forget at this point which ones I renamed. I might have renamed those, but probably not as soon as they correspond here. But anyway, add action. We're going to go to app select layer and we're going to go to layer two see it says channel 9 through 16 and this is set to any that means it'll turn it on and off you can set things to only on and only off and I'll get into when that is useful in some later later videos for right now we're going to use any so that this turns it on and off so now again these control our faders here now if we press this button it's going to light up and now we're on our second layer of knobs and you'll see this is the one i'm talking through right here now if you press it again it'll shut off because we configured it so it can be on and off. The light goes out and we're back at this. So you know there's a few different indicators that you're on the next layer. Now the last thing we're going to do here is, or actually we got a couple more things we're going to do here. Let's add a master fader. So MIDI into here, find controller. We're going to move our master fader here. We're going to add an action. So we're going to do fixed channel because this isn't going to change. Fixed channel, main, left, right. We're going to go to main, fader. And that's just going to, that's just going to be there. And so this is not a motorized fader, so when when you move it around, it's not going to do anything until you catch the main fader, until you pass or hit the value that it, it was previously at, and then it will move around. That's how that's how these things work with the non-motorized faders. Um, it's a little something to get used to, but it's not that big of a deal. Okay, so we got our faders, we got our master fader. Now let's add some mutes. So muting our channels is important, so I'm going to find controller, hit this button, button one, add action. We're going to do same thing of uh, uh, what was it? Console. current layer, go to current layer, and again, offset one, main, mute, and we're going to leave it on any so it can mute and unmute, alright, and then we're going to, so it says channel on mute, copy, find controller, paste, offset one, find controller, paste, Offset two, find controller, paste, offset three, find controller, paste, 
offset for find controller paste offset five find controller paste offset six and you get the idea paste offset seven all right now let's go back and these are now mutes for all of our channels and then we go to the second layer and they're mutes for all of our channels and i'm going to be trying to be careful not to mute the one that i'm talking through You could also invert these if you wanted. If you wanted them instead to light up when they were muted, because this is more of an on for the channel. Um, I generally like having it the other way. I guess I should have done this before, but if you go in here and you just hit invert, it'll now work the opposite for this one. So. Now it lights up when it's muted. So, you know, you're playing your show and then you want that one to be quiet. It indicates that now it's muted. I kind of like having it that way. And you can go through all of the other ones and set them up that way too. I'll, I will not do that right now just to save us some time. But maybe I will. I'll just cut it out. All right. Yeah. So now these are all, yeah. I just like, I like doing it that way. You can do whatever way you want. Um, now, it, we have all these buttons down here. Um, you could do whatever you wanted with those. Um, I guess I'll just show you how to do a mute group real quick. You could you could assign them all to be solos if you wanted, but let's just do a mute group real quick. So find controller, this button, add action, uh, app, uh, sorry, console, mute group. One pretty straightforward there. Muted, unmuted, muted, unmuted. You can see it on. I have these two in a mute group, and I also have a couple of these ones as part of that mute group, also. So back here, mute group, and again. Mute, uh, pressing this unmutes them, and then when it's lit up, they're muted. I like having that indicator that way. So then, you know, you can configure all these buttons to do whatever you want. And then also, this, all of these knobs also are buttons. So you could do, you could put your mute groups up here if you preferred, or any other buttons. But that pretty much covers it for what I'm going to show today. So... Again, we got our sends on fader, or our levels on our faders here, on our knobs. We can go to our second layer and control all of those things. And we've got our master fader over here. And then we have mutes for everything, and we have a mute group. And that is the basics of how you map MIDI on here. I'll be making some other videos of... Um, more complicated setups um, with a little bit more control, but this is, you know, just a very simple basic mixer setup that um, would be useful to anyone. It's basically just like having an analog mixer in front of you um, with a setup like this. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments, uh, questions, concerns, what else you'd like to see in a feature in a video, and... Yeah, there you go.